Oftentimes, the toughest part about getting into reptiles is making the right choice. Which one is best for me? So today, let's go over the top five reptiles you could possibly have as a beginner keeper. My name's Adam, this is Diamond, you're watching Wicked's Wicked Reptiles, stick around. Even if you're not a beginner keeper and you've had reptiles for a while, this video might be helpful because all of these animals are really awesome and kind of low maintenance and probably aren't going to really hurt you. But before we start, one order of business, I think this fan mail, here you want to help me open it there Diamond? I'm pretty sure it's for you. Here, you go right here. Well aren't you the rootness tootness? bearded dragon that there ever was. Thank you very much, Sage. I appreciate it. You're very active on the Discord and I appreciate you sending this to Diamond here, who's now gonna hide it from the camera. If you wanna send something to Diamond, there's a thing in the description. Anyway, let's start off number five. Ow, ow, ow. Number five, Anteresia. Now you guys know I love these little tiny hats. These little tiny pythons from Australia. Now these guys are going to be probably the smallest, well not probably, they are the smallest species of python that you can possibly get, or group of species, because it comprises of four, spotted pythons, Stinson's pythons, children's pythons, and the smallest of all, pygmy pythons. The big gripe with many keepers is, is this thing gonna eat for me? And that's why, spoiler alert, you will not see ball pythons on this list. Although I think they're great pets, I think that Antaresia are a similar size, but maybe better for some keepers because they will eat for you every time. They don't go on year-long hunger strikes. I just think that these guys are maybe a better option, but you might not have known about them because they're not as common. You're not gonna get morphs like you would with a ball python, but they do look absolutely beautiful in their natural form. And they are so handleable, that's the other thing. A lot of people want something that is handleable. If you're a beginner, you wanna handle your reptile, otherwise you might get bored of it. Now, this isn't always true. Sometimes you want something beautiful to look at, but this is both. And it's semi-arboreal, so you can actually have quite a elaborate, an elaborate type of setup if you want to, and it's gonna take up more than just a little space below. If you want a sand boa, for example, you're never gonna see it more than like two inches up off of its substrate, where with these guys, you'll see them up as high as you can possibly give them a branch or a limb to climb on. And as you'd expect with a beginner species, these guys don't get super big. We're talking about four feet or less, oftentimes, and they take a while to get to that size. And they don't get super girthy, but they get girthy enough that they don't feel fragile in your hands and they can still be, in my opinion, impressive. If you whip one of these full grown things out and say, hey, friend who doesn't know much about snakes, they're gonna say, wow, that thing is big. <laughs> even though it's the smallest python species that there is. So if you're looking for something that is semi-arboreal, that doesn't need a huge enclosure, really easy to take care of in terms of heat, humidity, and feeding, well, these guys might be for you. Number four, a countryman of diamond here, ping tongue skinks. These little skinks from Australia are absolutely gorgeous. And why are they called pink tongue skinks? Yeah. Pink tongues, they absolutely do have pink tongues. Very similar to blue tongue skinks like you've seen with my buddy Irwin here. I think that with pink tongue skinks, a little bit smaller, the enclosure is smaller, the heat and humidity are pretty much the same, and so is the diet, basically. So if you want a blue tongue skink in a smaller package, a pink tongue skink might be for you, and it adds an extra element of height because they are semi-arboreal, where blue tongue skinks are not. Now, what separates these guys from all the other species, because everything else in this list, I'm kind of keeping simple. Heat and humidity, pretty easy. Diet's pretty easy. Things like that. and doesn't take up a bunch of space and not dangerous. These guys are probably the hardest on the list to feed, or not even the hardest or most difficult, just the most diverse in terms of what they eat. Where an Antaresia, like a spotted python, like I showed you before, will eat frozen thawed rodents. These guys, the pink tongue skinks, are gonna need things like snails. They're gonna need things like earthworms. They'll need vegetation as well. So things like Swiss chard or bok choy, whatever you wanna feed them. Sometimes people feed them things like bananas on occasion. And then you can feed them things like premium dog food as well. So a very diverse diet. And then there's powder diets as well. Bluey Buffet is one that I use a lot. It's up to you what you wanna feed them, but there's a more diverse diet that you possibly could. And this is interesting to many people, which is why I made them on the list. 
And I mean, look how freaking cute these things are. I think they're absolutely adorable. You're not gonna find a bunch of morphs just like here in North America, it's tough to find morphs of blue tongues. With pink tongues, I don't think you're gonna find any really at all, but they're beautiful in their natural form. And all in all, these are exactly what you'd want in a beginner species for a reptile, I think. Number three, North American colubrids. Well, what does that mean? There's lots of those. I'm thinking three main ones for number three in the North American colubrid species, uh, milk snakes, king snakes, and corn snakes. Now, milk snakes and king snakes, there's a bunch of them. Almost all milk snakes are similar in the way that they look, act, and eat. But let's just say Pueblo milk snakes for the fun of it because their size is pretty good. They have a bunch of morphs and I have one. So I think those are great. California king snakes, I would say go as part of this three in one section of this list, and then corn snakes as well. And here's the reason why. There's morphs for basically all of them. So you can have something that is interesting to you to look at. Also, although they're gonna be a little bit faster and more squirmy than something like an Antaresia, children's python, anything in that family, I think that these guys are manageable, even for beginners, which is what the whole list is for, obviously. So you're not gonna have a tough time wrangling these guys in and they eat for you. Now, California king snakes, I said king snake as part of that list. Well, technically milk snakes are king snakes, so they eat really well as well. And corn snakes, they eat really well also. So you're never gonna have an issue, and they will almost always eat frozen thawed mice. So it's cheap to feed in terms of snakes, as far as snakes go, and also you're never gonna have issues with why is this thing not eating, and then you won't have to watch a video like this one here. Which you could, and should. But if you have these snakes, you don't necessarily have to because they're gonna eat for you basically always. Also, they don't normally get much more than six feet, if at all. And with corn snakes, you're gonna see more along the lines of around five, and then milk snakes, it depends. Pueblins aren't probably gonna get to six, but you might get something like a black milk snake, which will get to like seven feet. So it just depends which one you want. But in general, I think North American colubrids, these three, are the best for beginners, and especially because some people just don't want something that their friends have, which is what I always try to do with these lists, is give you something that you're not gonna see another YouTuber talk about on a list like this, and you're not gonna see in everybody's collection if you have friends who have reptiles. And I think that if you get yourself something like a California king snake, although not uncommon, is probably more uncommon than your corn snake that basically everybody has. Just a long-winded way to say these are a little bit cooler than what you might see on other lists. Put your hat back, we're almost done. Put it back on. You look so handsome. Oh, why are you tail in my mouth? Number two, rosy boas. Now we're keeping it in North America. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. And these guys are actually one of two, you know what, not just rosy boas, Rosy boas and rubber boas, because those are the two species of boa that you can find in North America. So I think they're cool, because that's where I'm from. And uh, rubber boas, I have one of those. So here's why I think that these are great reptiles for beginners. They don't get super big. For example, you might find a four foot uh, rosy boa, but you'll definitely never find a four foot rubber boa and you'll never find anything bigger than that. Normally three feet for each of these and even rubber boas likely two and a half feet is probably where they're gonna max out at. And they're really good at eating. This is like a constant thing. I know I keep beating a dead horse here, but there's a reason for it. If you buy an animal and it doesn't eat and you're a beginner, it's really gonna freak you out. I know you might be looking at this like, ah, no big deal. Trust me, if your animal doesn't eat for like three, four weeks and you're new, you're probably gonna get worried about it. You don't have to worry about it. With these two, one caveat here. With the rubber boas, you will have to brumate them first. So maybe buy one that's already been brumated, which a lot of breeders will actually do for you because they don't eat until after the first brumation. Rosy boas will eat basically a week after they come out of the mother. Both of these, because they're boas, don't hatch from eggs. In fact, they both come like their live birth. So rosy boas will come out of the mother and basically be looking for food almost immediately. I think that's super cool. And because they're so small and they're so handleable, they're absolutely amazing. Now, number one is obviously not a bearded dragon. I know that's what you're thinking, but it's not. There's a few reasons why I did a whole video about bearded dragons right here. 
and I love these guys. But number one is actually leopard geckos and African fat tail geckos for many reasons, such as their size and their ease of care. If there was an animal that someone said to me, hey, I am a business person, I go away for a week all the time and I can't check on my animals for seven days at a time, several times a year. I would say, well, if you absolutely need to get a reptile, make it a leopard gecko because you're gonna stick these things in their enclosure as long as their heat cycle and their light cycle is on a timer, a reliable timer, and you give them a big fresh bowl of water and then you feed them the day before you leave, they're good as long as they are of adequate size. Now, I wouldn't recommend taking care of an animal like this always. I'm just painting a picture of how easy they are to take care of, but they're not boring in my opinion. A lot of people will say things like ball pythons are boring. I disagree, but people say that because they're just kind of like derpy and they don't do anything. But with leopard geckos, they move around. They're very interesting. I personally think that leopard geckos are in my top five favorite reptile list just because their ease of care, but their cuteness and also, and obviously like you guys have seen my dogs. I like, I like cute things but also their diet is, is easy. They don't need any extra special light or, or crazy basking spot temperatures or anything like that. And they're fun to interact with and they're not dangerous. These are ones where I can literally stick Littlefoot, who's like the, the design on the shirt, by the way, Littlefoot on my shoulder and edit a whole video. I'll sit there for like eight hours editing a video and she'll barely move. So. I think these guys may be the best that you could possibly have in African fat tails and leopard geckos. I did a whole video here if you want to watch between the differences, but they're more or less, whoa, don't do it, don't jump. Very, very similar. And it just really depends which one you like. The humidity level is really the only difference, kind of, sort of, like major worth writing home about, and it's very small at that. So it's up to you, just kind of which one do you like looking at the most? because they're both really cool. And they both have the same diet. So if you wanna feed them things like crickets, mealworms, or if you wanna spice it up a bit and get yourself something like black soldier fly larva from my friends at Grub Terra, and you wanna get a wicked deal shipped right to your door, you can go to the link in the description below. Here, calm down there, buddy. I know, we're gonna get you some black soldier fly larva after the video. And use code WWR at checkout for 10% off of your order. And you could keep these guys in something like a PVC enclosure made by, say, cages. And because these guys have wicked, awesome enclosures, the best, the most well-constructed, easy to put together, and just best enclosures, period, you can get yourself free door handles by going to the link below using code WWR at checkout. That was pretty shameless. That worked, like, that was pretty smooth. I think. And for those of you who want to see extra content, get discounts on the merch, know about extra stuff, well, you can be a patron for as little as $1 a month, and I thank you all sincerely. Is that a word? Sincerely? Sincerely is the word. For my Patreon supporters, you guys are absolutely amazing. Thank you so much. You offer so much to this channel. You give me like the best ideas, and just overall, I love interacting on this platform. As little as a dollar a month, your name can be on here too. And I think that's it. Hit subscribe, see you on Monday.